Hi, it's Anne from the Useless Crafter for the 12 by 12 cardstock shop. I'm so excited to be with you guys today. I'm going to show you how to put together a cake topper. This cake topper may be different from the ones that you usually see me do. It's definitely more simple, but it's gorgeous. I absolutely love using these papers. Um, the thing is, you know, I'm, I do a lot of girly cake toppers. And so when I want to go for a more simple and elegant look, it really comes down to the paper that you use. So the one that I have right here, and I don't have my light on today because um, you can see how much it shimmers. I mean, this cake topper is just so beautiful. Um, what you want to do is, I, the way I keep it simple is I pick either two colors, or in the case that what we're going to do over here, it's really one color. But you want the different textures, and you want the just the very um, high quality paper. So this one, for instance, is the foil. Um, it's the gold foil, and then you have it's the same paper here. It's this metallic, silver metallic. It has um, some details on it. We will link everything in the video, of course. But on this one, I went again with the gold for behind it, so the last layer. Um, when you can, I like to use the foam um, tape or stickers just to give it some layers, sort of like the mandala that I did with the globe. Um, you want you don't want it flat. I mean, unless that's your preference. For me, I don't like things flat, so I'm always trying to add the layers in between. Now, the one that I picked today, I specifically picked this one because I want to show you how to layer when things are too thin and it's too difficult to use the foam tape because foam tape comes in different sizes, but sometimes it's still too thick or too wide. Um, and then I'll show you how to put on the stick at the end to make it straight. So here we go, we're gonna get started. So again, the thing is, it's with the paper. So I'm gonna show you some of the papers that I would recommend for you know more like um, an elegant birthday or um, a wedding cake topper. So here is the, the silver, so you can see I just cut that. And I don't know how if you can really focus in, but look at that D on the for the 42nd. It is really thin and look how well it cut. Now I'm using a Cricut Maker and I'm gonna show you design space for those that have um, a Cricut. But look at how delicate that is and it cut perfectly. There are no rips in this paper. I just absolutely love it. Okay, here is the other one that we're using today. I mean, just look at it. We're not even outside. So for this cake topper, I took it outside. And if you follow us on Instagram, you'll be able to see it too. I'm gonna show, I mean, just look at that. That's inside with just regular lighting. Um, when the sun hits it, it's just gorgeous. But here, this, this is the silver one that we're using today as well. But some of the ones that would work really well, this is from their new line. I mean, you can see just the detail in the paper. When you cut really thinly, you're gonna get the extra details and it just makes something so simple really pop and look really expensive. <laughs> if that's the look you're going for, I'm always going for that look. Um, something like this, this is blue. Uh, this is the basil foil paper. I. I use this for the gold as well, and I am in love with this paper. I'm gonna have to look afterwards to see if I can buy it in bulk. Um, this would be super, so oh, you can see what I'm wearing. Um, look at how much, I mean, this is perfect. Look at how much detail you get from that. So just imagine when it's outside on a cake, it just gives you um, just all the extra details that you want, but subtle. So here, I mean, like I said, this is the line that I would definitely be using for these elegant cake toppers. I'm gonna say elegant. Elegant is the same thing as expensive, <laughs> at least in my world. All right, so those are the papers that I would recommend. I mean, there's so many more to choose from, but when I'm doing sort of like a, a just like two colors or, um, single color, that's what I like to do is I like to layer it using the same colors but with different textures and that's really gonna get you um, 
that varied look, but still very cohesive. And if you were to add another layer, I might even throw in glitter cardstock. So on this one, I was gonna go with the, with the gold glitter cardstock, but I just absolutely love that foil paper. So that's why I stuck with that. But I mean, seriously, right? I'm in love with it. <laughs> okay, so this is our back layer and our top layer. I know it's kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna show you how to contour in Design Space for those that have the Cricut afterwards. So this is what it looks like here. This is obviously thick enough that we can put just the foam tape behind and it will pop up a little bit. Um, sometimes it's so thin that you can't even do anything about it. I would just stick it on. The fact that we have three layers, this is why it's great to do three layers is at least we know one layer can have that, um, that little depth that we're looking for. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to have a glue gun going because we're going to use the glue gun and we're going to put glue on the back of these thin ones and just let it dry. We're not going to use it as glue. We're going to let it dry and we're going to use it as a spacer. So that will just give it a little bit of height and depth that we want. Um, for some, So I think the foam tape will be fine for happy and birthday because there's some spaces that are you know like where the d is and the h it's thick enough and the um and the b uh for this one i mean i think we can put we can add a little height there but you know i'm just going to take this and i'm going to turn it around so you want to turn everything around because we're going to be adding the glue to it so you want a precision tip um glue gun for this because we're adding we're going to put just a little dot on here and the way I do it is I put the little dot and then I swirl it around so that we don't get the glue um, webbing. I'm not really sure what you call it, but that's going to be enough to add a little bit of height. When it dries, it's you know obviously going to dry clear and it's going to be stiff. And then we're going to put a little bit more glue on and that glue we're actually going to use as glue. We're going to put that one on top of where the four is. All right, so on this one, I'm going to add a little bit of glue and just let it dry. So I'm swirling it so that, and I didn't swirl very well on that one because I can see my, my webbing, my glue, it's come, oh my gosh. You know, I just switched out a new type of glue and it drips so much. So it's definitely not the glue gun because I've been using this glue gun for a long time, but I do think it's it's the glue stick. So just be careful with that. That's definitely a lesson learned for me. Um, I was trying out, I went and just got something on Amazon. I didn't realize that um, glue sticks actually have major differences in quality. So that's what you get, right? Or that's what I get. Um, okay, so I'm gonna try to do this again and hopefully it doesn't drip as much. Um, the two is good. This one might be too small. I think with my glue gun, I'm not gonna try it. Normally I would, but I'm gonna do it for the word happy. So yeah, I'm struggling with my with my glue stick today. <laughs> It will not stop dripping. All right, that's a big glob over there. And I'm gonna put one more over here. I may have to just buy a new glue gun because I've been trying to um, switch out the glue stick, but I don't know if it's just stuck, if someone knows, please post in comments because I will definitely read the comments. Um, if it sort of just gets stuck in there, if there's enough like remaining in the glue gun that it's causing it to drip. <laughs> All right, so with this big one, let's do this. We're just gonna add the foam tape to give it the height that we want and the layering look that we want. And then what I like to do is I always have one of these self-healing mats on um, the table. And I like it because most of the time when we're doing words or, I mean, even when you're doing an image, there's always, 
a section that you know is straight, right? So keep that in mind when you're designing that, um, you know, in this case, it's easy because the whole, while it's a cursive font, it still has, you know, we can kind of tell where it's straight because we're gonna line that up later to put our sticks. So when we line this up, then you can use this line here to put your glue, st um, to put your wood stick in, your dowel, and that way your stick is gonna be straight. Because when you put it on your cake, you really want the stick to be straight. Like, you, <laughs> because it's, it's going to be off. Someone's going to have to fix it, you know, tilt it. it otherwise, you're going to be able to see it. So you want to make sure that your stick is straight. And we're going to be doing that. So, okay. And you can see here on the four, the glue is dry on here. I'm going to see if you can, you can see how it sticks up a little bit. So when we put the glue down, it's not going to be flat. It's actually going to pop up a little bit. So that's what you would do normal because look at my look how much is dripping down <laughs> so just be careful that's my tip for you on what not to do is don't go cheap on your glue stick apparently <laughs> all right so with the glue the foam tape you want to just peel this off and i always push down on it because i want to make sure that the tape is activated so i'm calling it i didn't realize this but you know what i use htv so heat transfer vinyl for things like um, personalizing a sweatshirt and then there's regular vinyl and just adhesive regular adhesive stuff um, i didn't realize that a lot of people in the business call it pressure vinyl or pressure adhesive so basically when you put pressure on something you're sort of um like activating the stickiness and getting it to really stick onto the surface. I mean, it makes sense. I, I, I just, I just didn't really um, added that, you know, add that much more pressure to it. It did. I would just put it down, but not really push on it. So it's really important to push on it and to really get it to stick to the surface and kind of let it cure. Okay, so here we go. I mean, just look at this and you can see it's just subtle, right? The darker gray behind it. And then you can see already the layers right there. It really does make a difference. So here's, all right, so we're done with that. Let's put um, the birthday, let's put some foam tape on here. And it's just a little bit thick. So I'm actually going to use some scissors to, so that, um, And you want to make it so that it's even, right? So that you don't have a dip in your banner or in your cake topper. So you want to just be um, even and parallel. So you want to make sure that your foam tape is supporting the whole word. All right. You're going to always put more. And I love the offset feature in Design Space now for my Cricut. Um, but if you use your die cuts, they always have an offset as well. So there, right? It's just coming together. I absolutely love it. And then I'll tilt it this way so you can see the layers that you get. Okay, now let's do this one. So this has the dried glue on there which i'm trying to see if you can see it all right i'm just going to put a little bit of glue on top and this is gonna you know be what makes it this is 
what's going to make it stick. And we can always clean up the glue afterwards. Right. Now, when you're using this method, what I like to do is I like to hold it down while it's glue while it's drying so that it um, is even. So you can really hold it and it will dry that way. And watch, look at how it pops up, right? And that's from the happy, that's from our glue, our glue gun. And then this at the bottom, the birthday is from the tape. So I love being able to do that. <laughs> Today is just not a good day with the glue that I chose, the glue stick. But you can see how well that worked for the word happy. I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy with it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do the four right now. Now the four has just one glue dot right there. So it's going to be important that I keep my finger on there to keep it balanced while it's drying so that it dries um, parallel to the bottom layer. Okay, so here we go. Putting it down, I'm keeping my finger on the actual glue dot. It's leveled. And it's dry. I don't think it's gonna move that much more. So I'm gonna show you what that four looks like. Right? Awesome, right? <laughs> okay, so let's do this. Now the word second, I'm not gonna attempt the glue dots with that because it's really, really, really thin. Um, so I'm gonna use my next favorite. <laughs> this is the Tombow Permanent Adhesive. I like this for really delicate things, so we'll do that for in a second. Let's do this too. Now the two has two glue dots on there, so I'm just going to add a little bit of the glue on top of both. Flip it over. And it wanted to like fall down, but I pulled it back and it's dry. And we do need to clean that up a little bit. I saw the drippings. So I usually just take some, you know, like tweezer-ish like tools and grab onto it and pull it out. So. That's it. All right, so now onto this one. Um, I always have some scratch paper and just flip it over. Now this is really delicate, so you wanna make sure you go in one direction, hold down the delicate parts, because you don't want this to rip at this point, <laughs> right towards the end, right? Okay, so I'm gonna flip it over and do this side. Okay. Then, when you pick it up, this sort of reminds me of like a spider web, like with the webbing. So you wanna make sure that before you put it on your cake topper, because it's a lot easier to clean it up now than it is once it's on the cake topper, just sort of pop the webbing. So like in inside the D, you know, that little circle in there, I can see that there's a, a layer of glue. So I want to just pop it and push it to the side so that it doesn't show on my cake topper. So I'm sort of just cleaning it up right now. And then move this over and hold the end because the end is really delicate. Okay. So you can continue to hold and use this and put it down. Okay, so I'll flip it this way. So you can see the, the ND is flat on there, but the rest has so many layers that you're not gonna notice that. Okay, so we're done with that. Let's flip it over and I'm gonna show you how to put the dowel on. 
Okay, so here it is. I mean, we know even though it's a handwriting and bounce lettering, we kind of get a feel for how it's straight though, right? So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna line it up because here's our loop of the Y. So I'm gonna line it up like this. So this is kind of straight for me. Um, and you wanna put it kind of in the middle, right? Because you want it to be supported. This is not heavy, so we don't need it, you know, we don't need it to be perfectly centered because if there was like a big hole right here like this, I wouldn't want to put my stick here because then you can see the stick through it. So I want to put it right around here. And you can also, I like this because here's our three squares. So this is the middle. The very middle would be right here, which is perfect. So I'm going to line that up. My, my dowel is straight with my grid. And then I'm going to take my drippy glue gun and I'm just gonna put it down on both sides and put glue on both sides. And that's it, you wanna just let it dry. Now the thing is, you could also have one more layer of this. If you mirror it and you put it on, then you can have the shiny side out and it would cover the dowel. Um, that's definitely extra. <laughs> I always feel like you put the cake topper on and no one sees the back of it. So sometimes I'll do it, sometimes I don't. It just depends. All right, look it, yay. <laughs> so here you have it. Um, now I get a lot of questions on how big to make it. So usually, let's say you have a 10 inch cake, then I wanna do about eight inches. So that way you have an inch on each side of the cake and then you have your cake topper. Um, but if your cake is kind of small and you wanna go towards the edge, I, you know, the, it's totally up to you, but that's usually my rule of thumb. And look at how I love it. I'm gonna show you next to my face so you can see how big it is. But look at even in the screen, you can see how much it shimmers. Love this paper. All right, let me know what you think. Uh, if you wanna see anything else, let me know so that I know what to do next time. All right, have a great day. Bye guys.